whisk or if you've got a less strong one it might take a bit longer about seven minutes but anyway off we go is it becomes very thick and mousse like because of all the air that's been incorporated into it and you know it's ready when you lift your whisk up and you can leave a trail of mixture on top of the rest of the mixture when it leaves a visible trail then you know that it's ready it used to be called when I first started cooking um, you beat it up till the ribbon and the ribbon meant this little trail that you get there right so what we'll do now is introduce the chocolate to that and the chocolate is now ready so we'll turn the heat out and the first thing I need to do is just stir it till it's smooth and the butter is completely dissolved into it. Now what we need to do is introduce the chocolate mixture to the other mixture but quite carefully because we've beaten all the air in so what we want to do is just pour it around the edges so we don't knock too much air out of it. And what I'm going to do now is it's quite hot the bowl so what I'm going to do is get my cloth here and finish off using the spatula just to get the rest of the chocolate in. That's it. Now the next part of the recipe is flour. We've got two and a half ounces of flour here and what we're going to do is sift the flour into the mixture. You can see how light this is going to be because there's only two and a half ounces of flour. So we've got all eggs and chocolate and just a little bit of flour. So you can already imagine just how wonderfully light this pudding is going to be. Sift the flour, then take a large spoon and do the folding movements exactly the same as we did with the chocolate mousse because careful folding means we're going to preserve all that lovely air which is going to be what makes the puddings eat beautifully light. And you need to take a bit of time over this because if you don't fold it properly, you get little sort of blocks of white. And we want it to be very even. Now, that's all ready now to be cooked, but the very good news about this recipe is that you can make it in advance. It actually serves eight people and you need eight of these little aluminium cooking pots. They're about six fluid ounce capacity and they need to be really very, very well buttered. And then you just fill them up and what you can do then, if you like, is just put them into the refrigerator, cover them with cling film and then just whip them out when you're ready to serve them because they don't take long to cook. In fact, if you were cooking them straight away now, they would only take about 10 to 12 minutes. But if you're keeping them in the refrigerator for three hours, then they're probably going to take about 14 minutes, but that's very little cooking time. And the oven temperature is gas mark six or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't fill them right up to the top, just leave a little bit of a gap because they are going to rise up a bit. And here's our exquisite little chocolate pudding. Loosen it with a palette knife. It comes away quite easily from the dish if you've got it well buttered. And then what I want to show you is what happens inside the pudding. There's beautiful, lovely, flowing, melted chocolate. And what I would do with that is I would serve it with some very well chilled, it's nice and hot, the pudding, some well chilled pouring cream. But I'm not finished yet because as beautiful and as light and as luscious as that is, it's also actually, we've discovered, very nice cold. So I've got a cold one here and you could equally serve it cold. I just want to show you the texture inside. It's still quite squidgy and soft inside. And then in that case, I would serve it with a nice little dollop of whipped cream. And just before we finish with chocolate puddings, I have to say a big thank you to my friends in Morston Hall in Norfolk who gave me the recipe. Thank you.
Last time he made apple muffin cake, but these are chocolate mini muffins and they're topped with melted chocolate and toasted hazelnuts. These are chocolate brownies, but rather special ones because they're made with soaked prunes and chopped almonds. Nice to eat just as they are, or served warm with ice cream or whipped cream. Don't forget, though, that though you think brownies look uncooked, they are cooked. They're meant to be really squidgy and moist like this. Well, as usual, I've almost run out of time, but that's okay today because I'm going to show you a chocolate recipe that's specially designed for people who have no time. It's called Cheats Chocolate Trifle, and the cheating is because more or less everything that goes in it is just bought from the shop. First of all, you have double chocolate muffins, which are available in all supermarkets. You make them into little sandwiches, slice them, make them into sandwiches with this, which is Morello Cherry Jam, a nice sharp jam. Then you place them in a trifle bowl, and the next ingredient is a jar of these. These are Morello, cherry, Morello cherries, which again are quite sharp, and you soak them for overnight in three fluid ounces of rum. Then, next day, what you do is you put the rum that the cherries were soaked in over the trifle sponges and let them soak it up, and then in go the cherries, on top. Then what I've got here are the contents of these two tubs. One a fresh custard sauce and the other of mascarpone full fat cream cheese and they've just been mixed together with one and a half bars of melted chocolate. So that goes in next on top of the cherries and then what we're going to do there is just spread that out and then all we're going to do next is top it with half a pint of whipping cream and the whipping cream has been whipped to the sort of soft floppy stage so that goes in on top of the chocolate mixture and that's spread out all around and then finally one and a half bars of chocolate were melted into the mascarpone mixture and the half that was left over has been shredded with a knife into little shreds and that's going to go on the top and then that's going to be covered with cling film, go into the refrigerator and really chill well and I think that is the fastest trifle in the whole world. Now you saw how easy that was. We've been cooking away for quite a long time now and I can tell you it hasn't always been this easy. Well there are two magic words that are always going to be on the label if you've got real fr free range chicken and I can't remember what they are. <laughs> We have our beautiful piece of golden fried skate. All that needs now on the side is some of our lovely homemade tomato. Uh. <laughs> and here's our beautiful piece of golden fried skate. All that needs now on the side is some of our excellent, very quick homemade tomato. Uh. <laughs> Can't do it! Oh, sod! What will happen is it might not work with the butter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just had exactly eight minutes. I'm going to remove it to a plate. <laughs> is it all right? Have we got some old haddock that we can boil up quickly and get some coloured milk? How's that? It's all still too high. What a beautiful green salad. What a beautiful green... <laughs> There's a blue bottle clawing over the cheese. So what do we do now? <laughs> Sticky moments. There won't be any. <laughs> <laughs> she said! 